Hey, what is up guys? When we left off, we actually had uh, some kind of working menu. So if we were to press on this guy over here, it would send us to the first, very first scene of our game. So this is our game scene in which we're going to spawn a player in there. And it's going to have some nice assets, some cool jump and pretty much whatever you want. So, um, but we're not going to tackle that just yet. We're, we're still in the main menu. We want to make sure this works properly and maybe even tackle the shop before we actually start tackling the gameplay. So for this one, what I'd like to do actually is I wanna make sure that this actually looks good with the camera. So I wanna have my camera rotating uh, like we talked in the first episode. So I wanna start like this. And once I press on this button, my camera rotates and it looks here. So to do that, we are actually going to set some uh, really sharp values to our position. So let's go ahead and take our camera. That's the first thing we'll do. We'll go, we'll go ahead and take our camera, put it at the very center of the world. So zero, zero, and zero. So now it is stacked at the origin of the world. And we're going to be moving our UI container to zero, 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 if it is, uh, if it isn't already done. And now let's go ahead and take our main menu. We're going to do the same exact thing. So zero, zero, zero. And now depending on um, our preference, we're actually just going to move it on the Z axis. You can select your camera over here in the hierarchy to have a preview down here. So I'll just go ahead. Oh, make sure you don't select the buttons only make sure you select the whole thing. I'll be putting mine at 150. And it's going to look like this in the game. And that's actually that's way too big. Let's put it at something like 200. Also, a good thing that uh, we should have done a little bit earlier is we want to make sure that this has a phone resolution. So if we go on any kind of game um, window, in case you don't have the game window, go ahead and, and select it from the window here and select game or hit control two on the keyboard. It's going to show you this very window. Now I want to have mine as a 16 by nine um, landscape game. So what I like to do actually is use some built-in function that Unity has to make this really simple. So what we're going to tell the game is we're going to look for the camera transform. Now this is going to be easy to get from our script because it has the main camera tag on it. So using that main camera tag, we're going to find that uh, very game object. Then we'll get the transform and we're going to use a built-in function on the transform that is called look at. So we're pretty much just going to take uh, this transform and tell him, go ahead and look at this menu. As simple as that. So um, let's actually do it in the code. If we go back inside of our main menu and uh, we go down here, we create a new public function this time. And we're going to say public uh, void let's say look at menu that is going to take in a transform uh, parameter. So let's just call it menu transform or something of the sort. Now, all we have to do here is say camera dot main, and this is going to return us the, the camera object. And then we say transform. Now we have the camera transform and then we say look at so dot look at and it's asking us for a world position. We can find that inside of, of our uh, menu transform dot position just like this. Okay, so just by typing that in, uh, when we call this function, we should send it just a uh, transform, any transform in the scene, and it should turn the camera to look at this exact transform. Now we're going to actually use that on our buttons. And uh, for every single of the, uh, the buttons, so level selection, also two shop, and also the back button we're going to have here, they're all going to be using the, uh, the same exact function. So we are going to go on our button level selection, this one. And on the unclick event down here, we're going to hit the plus sign and then assign the main menu object. Now, uh, make sure this is the main menu that we, I guess, manager, not the main menu from our UI container, but the main menu that contains the main menu script. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this down here. 
and where it says no function you're going to open up this drop down menu go in our main menu component look for the function we just made so the look at menu which takes in a transform parameter now we are on the level selection and when we click on that level selection we'd like our camera to go ahead and uh, look at this over here so uh, this menu this is the level selection now let's take the level selection UI container and drag and drop it inside of our empty field here all right so let's go ahead and hit play on this see if the result is fine and as you can see it did move to the level selection menu which is exactly what we want now a little bit later on we'll add some uh, smoothing in between that so instead of just uh, directly moving towards uh, where it should look at we are uh, actually going to make a smooth transition so it looks like uh, the camera is actually doing something like this and then it looks at it okay now let's do the exact same thing for the two shot button so uh, right here we're going to add a new on click event make sure you you drag and drop the main menu in there the function is called look at menu and we're going to look at the shop container so same thing we hit to shop and we're now looking at this one on the left okay so now these two guys on the sides the level selection and the shop they need to have buttons that point toward this menu so we can return at this menu at any time so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just um, in the level selection I'll go ahead and create a new button right below that I'm not going to do it in the level button container I'm actually just going to do it inside of the level selection UI button and I will anchor it top left so click on the top left and I'll also put the pivot point so by holding shift I will click on the top left again now I'll put the position on 0 0 0 width on say 50 by um, 30 in this case or we could be making this level selection a little bit bigger so maybe 200 150 okay something of the sort and this is going to be a return button so right now I'll just go ahead and just uh, put this in there okay and now that button is going to do the exact same thing as these two so on the unclick event I'll add a new event drag and drop the main menu in there go in main menu look at menu and I will drag and drop the main menu transform let's go ahead and try this so level selection the return button and it's working like that now in the 3d scene it actually looks like this oh if we take our camera so once we have um, some smooth transition it's actually going to give it a 3d effect and also what I want to do uh, a little bit later on is have some pretty much just some gameplay going on uh, below that so so we can have some kind of active scene and it looks like something is going on in this scene and we're simply going to uh, transition this really smoothly okay and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and add a back button on this shop as well I will go here add a new button so right click on that UI button in this case I'll anchor it top right same thing as before position 0 0 0 width 50 and what did we put over here we put like 30 I think so let's go ahead and put 30 and I will be uh, creating a on click event drag and drop the main menu again main menu look at menu and I will add the main menu again uh, to the transform and I'll actually change the text for something of the sort again now we should be good to go we should have some smooth not smooth but we should have some uh, transition some game flow going on so level selection okay never mind mistake we go back to shop we do our shopping come back again and then we can go start a level just like this 
Okay, so pretty much all we need right now is some content inside of the shop and we also need to make this uh, camera a little bit more uh, nice by adding the smoothing mechanic and you know what, we're actually going to do that right now since we're already in the code and it's going to be uh, out of the way. So we are going to add right below the start, we're actually going to add an update in here. Again, this is a callback from Unity so make sure you do no no mistake in that, so capital U and then update and um, pretty much what we're going to do right here is we are going to change the rotation of the camera every single frame. So what I'd actually like to do to make this more optimal is up here we'll actually create a private transform that we'll call camera transform. And uh, I'll also create another transform below that that will create camera look at or actually camera desired look at desired look at so by having these two transform we are going to be able to manipulate the camera so it uh, does a smooth movement so in the update actually first let's go in the start let's make sure that we do have a camera that's a uh, really important thing um, so camera transform you can put this anywhere in your start, I'll just put it up here. So camera transform is going to equal camera.main.transform, just like this. So now we have a value inside of that. And let's also do uh, camera desired at. Now how exactly should we be doing this, I'm wondering. We are actually going to say camera desired look at it should not exist actually well it should be pointing toward the main menu but um, I don't think we have any any anything pointing toward that main menu so what we'll do actually is we'll go down here where it says um, look at menu so the function we just made and instead of doing this we are going to say camera desired look at is equal to menu transform just like this so now whenever we call that function, we are simply going to change the value of camera desired look at. In our update, we're going to check if camera desired, up, um, camera desired look at exists. So if camera des desired look at is not equal to null, then we are going to do our rotation. So if it is not equal to null, we're going to do camera transform dot rotation is equal to um, quaternion dot slurp and we'll do cam transform dot rotation oh, camera transform where's it at I can't type camera transform dot rotation and then we'll do camera desired look at also dot rotation and the last parameter is a speed parameter, so we'll just say maybe um, 3 times time dot delta time. Okay, let's close this off and actually look at what it gives us in game. So let's actually look if it does something uh, decent. And it, it's actually not too bad. Actually, it looks great. <laughs> so I think we'll be uh, keeping that for now and maybe a little bit later on we want to do some modification, I don't know why but just in case it doesn't work with the rest of our stuff but I'm pretty sure this is going to work for the whole thing actually. So um, what, we did, what we did here is a quaternion.slurp which is the equivalent of, not equivalent but it's, it's pretty much the same thing as a vector3.lerp. This is pretty much the same exact thing but we're using quaternion instead and instead of using a lerp which is linear we're using a slurp which is pretty much just uh, spherical. So it's going to start really slowly, increase really fast. We're using slurp with rotation and we're pretty much using lerp with uh, position. And um, also one thing that I'd like to add is you can modify this as much as you want. You could also create a value up here, so maybe a const, so private const float camera speed or actually camera transition speed 
and I'll just leave mine on three because uh, I like it that way. It looked great actually. So uh, maybe create a value up here because we don't we don't we don't want to have any uh, hard coded values in our code, and replace that three over here for your new constant variable. Okay. Again, I'm gonna hit play on this just to look at it, and that's that's good. That's perfectly fine with me. So we go here, go to the shop, do our shopping, go back, level selection, load the level, and here we are. Okay, so that's a fairly good start, guys. Again, I will hand on this note, and in the next one, we'll actually start tackling the shop, which is a big topic, and we're gonna also going to do um, some saving because we need to we need to know when our player buys something with in-game currency, so we know which thing he bought, and when he turns the game back on, it's actually still there. He still has that uh, reward that he bought. Okay, so that's going to be in the next episode, but for this one, guys, it's pretty much over, and as always, if you enjoyed this, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below, and also subscribe for more tutorials like these. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.